Today's video is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon provides innovative earbud designs that don't break the bank. These are their everyday earbuds. I've been using these to edit videos. I use them when I work out at the gym. These are the most comfortable fitting earbud I have ever used. These things are awesome. Raycon's anniversary sale is coming up. The company is turning six years old. This past year, they have expanded their entire business, introducing Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech. And to thank everybody who has showed their support over the last six years, they are offering 20% off the whole website and up to 40% off select products. Raycon has made a name for itself in the premium audio industry with products like the Everyday Earbuds. These have a 32 hour battery life. They were designed to fit in a human ear and they follow the natural shape of a human ear. They don't fall out, they're super comfortable and they have over 78,000 five-star reviews. These things are just as good as any premium brands you see out there at half the price. What I really like about these is that they are water resistant. You can get them sweaty from working out. You can accidentally leave them in your pocket, run them through the washer, especially being out here in Florida, they could easily fall in a puddle or I could get soaked while walking out in the rain and I know that these things are gonna be good to go. Celebrate Raycon turning six years old with their biggest sale of the year going on right now. Go to buyraycon.com slash boys and use code birthday and you'll save anywhere from 20 up to 40% off site-wide. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. All right, go. Hold it down. Poor hatch. Had to bust out the winch today, guys. Left this thing at the Freedom Factory overnight. We're getting her picked up. All right, guys, we got the hatch all loaded up. Shout out to Cletus for letting us leave it in the Freedom Factory parking lot over here. But we're gonna get this thing back to the house and hopefully we can find out what happened to the drivetrain and definitely needs a new head gasket. So I got the hatch back at the house here, got her unloaded. And real quick, I wanna show you guys what we got going on. I think we might be good. I was very worried that we broke something in the trans or the drivetrain, but let me fire her up real quick. I have been trying to putz it around the yard just to make sure everything sounds okay. And I think I found out what it is. Trans does have to come off, but it's not as bad as I thought. So she fires right up and if we put it into gear, goes into gear fine, there's no bad noises. But if you look at the clutch, the car doesn't want to go until I really start to let the clutch up. I mean, we're creeping forward and I'm almost all the way off the clutch. But once she gets going, it's vibrating a lot, it's vibrating, but once we get going, we're good. So I don't know how well you guys could see that, but basically the clutch pedal has to come all the way out for this thing to really start to engage. I think we just overpowered the clutch and it let go at the top of first gear. It went straight to limiter and I bet that glazed the clutch over and just cooked it. So I'm pretty confident to say that we just need a new clutch in the hatch, get a new head gasket on this thing and she is ready to rip again, which I am very happy about that. I was worried at first it was something in the drivetrain really hoping it wasn't something in the trans but everything seems good to go there this is a very old twin disc clutch so i'm not surprised this is the same clutch that we had in the routacy back when it was an h series and this clutch has been through a lot so for it to just now let go on a 800 plus horsepower all-wheel drive setup with some hard hard launches i am not complaining about that all we needed was two more runs out of this thing man we were in the semifinals. we could have made it through but on the same pass the head gasket decided to check out as well as the clutch. So should be able to get that stuff fixed pretty easily. And then we will try to get the hatch back to the track. I really wanna see this thing run a full pass without letting up. I think that that 890 pass was gonna be an 870 for sure if I didn't let up. That eighth mile was on a mission. The hatch was just ripping boys. So we'll get her fixed up and be all good to go. Try it again. Well guys, in order to get the MR2 ready for World Cup, got some wiring to do. This is all gonna be up to wire here. I just know how much he loves wiring. But it's about to get busy here. Uh, as you can see, we got the old harness on the table here. This had everything that ran the MR2, the engine harness, chassis harness. It's all bundled up right here. And why it's gonna be going through it and getting a lot of things cleaned up because a lot of this was just exposed laying in the car. And like we said in one of the previous videos, it was a last minute effort to get this thing into the sevens. And once we got it up and running, we never revisited any of the wiring. But now we're going through it, making it look clean, updating stuff and as you guys saw we got some new components going into the mr2 we already showed you guys we got an ft600 going into the car if you look right here this is fuel tech's new nano pro 
Uh, we normally have a little display right here for our wideband, but their Nano Pro is essentially the wideband controller, but it also can be programmed to do a whole bunch of other things. This is actually a mini touch screen right here, which is really cool. So that's new and updated. And if you guys look down over here, we have this unit from ECU Masters. This is their PMU-16. This is a PDM. This is actually the same one Wyatt has in his truck. It's very straightforward. This terminal right here is a power. Get a hot wire to that guy, and then you can have that control multiple functions. These things are really awesome. Like Kyle said, I run two of these in the truck. Uh, what I love about these is they're a little pricey, but worth every penny. You get rid of your fuse block and all of your relays, and this is a solid state relay now. So you can control tons of stuff, code logic into the channels to make them do crazy things. Uh, and then, like I said, it's, it's one input, takes care of the whole chassis harness. It'll do 150 amps continuous, and then it gives you 10 channels that are all 25 amp and six channels that are all 15 amps. And uh, yeah, tons of awesome features in these guys. And we pair that with this CAN keypad. So we can program cool stuff onto this. You can do like multiple mode buttons, all kinds of crazy stuff, switch the colors, the whole deal on this. And that will control everything that our PMU is gonna take care of for the car. No more fuses, no more relays. Like you said, it's all in this guy right here. Nice and neat little package. So that is a very nice piece from ECU Masters. And then we also have a couple new components that you guys haven't seen yet. So this right here is a peak and hold unit from Fuel Tech. This is actually gonna be our injector driver because if you guys look right underneath that guy, we've got these very nice injectors right here from Fuel Tech. And these are the 520 pound an hour injectors. This injector alone almost flows or probably does outflow the two injectors we currently have in each cylinder of the car. So we're gonna have tons more fuel on tap ready to go. Some of these other components you guys have already seen in the past. This is our EGT controller right here. We also got some new EGT probes so we can measure the exhaust temps in each runner. Uh, this little guy right here is our laser height sensor. We definitely need that because we're sending it to the moon and we don't want to do any backflips. But just the same uh, banner laser height sensor there. We got a new kill switch to run to the back of the car. Then we also got this nice little bulkhead adapter and that's going to run through the back firewall just to clean a whole bunch of things up. This is probably the same one we got on the Rowdy C, right? Yep, it's the uh, same nice one I've been using on. That way, if you go to drop the motor, one connection, drop the engine harness with the engine. It's really nice. Yep, and then we don't have all these wires dangling inside the car anymore. Yep. And then we're reusing our E Gate from Turbo Smart. This is the same 60 mil E Gate that we've had since we put it on. We've had no issues with this thing. This is the original one. Yep. It's been working flawlessly. I was gonna say, we were the one of the first ones to get these running on the fuel tech and man it's been great for us no complaints so yeah we tell that thing what boost we want to make and it makes it, it perfectly and then this is just the driver or the power supply for that guy right there and then we got some unterminated harnesses from fuel tech just to redo some stuff and why it has this table laid out here because he's gonna have a fun few days going through this thing yep getting her all wired up probably about a week but it'll be a really nice harness fully loomed terminated labeled the whole deal once it's done so no more spaghetti wiring and uh, reusing old connectors laying on the floor. So yeah, hey, it, did it, it did its it. job, but it worked good. It was just super ugly. If you unplugged one thing, you didn't actually know kind of where it went back to. So we're gonna alleviate all those problems and just make it way straightforward. It's a really nice setup. Well, once you get to it, cool, I'll we'll get to it. Have fun doing other things for the next week. I'll be here. <laughs> So as you guys know, we are getting the MR2 ready for World Cup. We were really busy up until FL2K, getting some other things planned out because as of right now, we have, what, maybe two weeks to get this thing ready. Like I need, It needs to be yeah. running and ready ideally, for testing in like no more than two weeks. Yeah, ideally we should be testing next week, which ain't gonna happen, but three weeks if we absolutely <laughs> had to, but that would be like the day before we're supposed to load it and leave. We're so. gonna be pushing the timeline. Either way, Wyatt has stayed back for a couple days. That's why he wasn't with us the first couple days at FL2K because as you guys just saw, he had some wiring to get done and he has been working on that while we were gone. And yep. if you guys look over here, he has some wires laid out, getting the harness built here. Yeah, running the wires is actually the easiest part of this. It's like paint. The, the outcome of the paint is all based on your preparation. So same with wiring. So we've been getting that all dialed in. It doesn't look like a whole lot's been done here, but uh, really, look at this, guys. everything that takes the amount of time is what's on the computer there. And then this here, the diagram of kind of where all of your wiring branches out, all your branch points, uh, lengths for everything. And then, and then on the computer, just kind of 
terminating every single wire so you have a good idea of where it's going, you know exactly where it's going to and from, what wire it is, what color it is, how big it is, the whole deal. So yeah, yeah. literally have every wire laid out. Yep, every single the wire in the car. So how long it needs to be, what color it is. Yep, where it's going. Nice little diagram. From, the whole deal. So we uh, started running wiring today, hopefully in the next day or so. Probably tomorrow we'll get most of the wiring cut to length and kind of set out here on the table. And then it'll be a full day of uh, looming it and then probably another full day or two of pinning it out. So stuff doesn't happen overnight, but a lot of work going on to this wiring. It's going to be a really nice setup once it's all done. So looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it's finished. It'll be a lot better than the old harness was. That thing was so bad. So <laughs> this one will be nice. One harness, the entire car is wired with that one deal with provisions for extra stuff. So while we were over at World Cup, not only was he working on all of the wiring over here, but he also went ahead and threw a engine and transmission back into this thing. This is just a mock-up motor. I believe it's one of Wago's old bottom ends and we just threw everything together because we don't even have our engine yet. Where the heck is Hector at? We ain't got no engines. I don't know the quote from the movie, but we ain't got no engines we and we got, got no a race engines. and we got a race to go to. Yep. So we got a mock-up motor in here. We do have the real sequential in there right now. And why I put all of this in there just so he could measure where the wires needed to go, make sure everything was Yep. the right length made it nice and right. clean looking nothing's planning too around. long or too short yeah we're planning around changing some stuff too for the billet motor so i needed it all in there so i could see where things were going to be moved to like we're moving the water pump and the radiator fan so you got to make sure you got enough length to get there nothing's too or nothing's worse than coming up too short so until we get the billet engine we have this one for mock-up so we can get the harness done and then i haven't even showed that we got this new seat in there we now have a full containment seat in the MR2. Brand new Kirky, why I got the mounts knocked out on that. We had to change just the front ones, but other than that, it was pretty similar to how the old one went in. But this one is also tied into the roll cage in a couple extra places compared to the old one. And it is in there nice and freaking solid. I don't know if we showed you guys the inside, but why it got the uh, flooring all finished out as well with the tunnel there. Super clean on the inside of the car now. Got that 600 mounted up. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of work to do here, guys. Yeah, that's, everybody loves the YouTube video because it happens in 10 seconds, but man, there's a lot of time that goes into these things behind the scenes. So that's where I was at FL2K, but we're getting there and uh, hopefully we can get it all put together for World Cup. We also got the front end apart right here. Don't want to go into too much detail. We'll talk about it later, but just to give you guys a quick update, we no longer have the battery up here. We are probably going to make some mounts in case we need to add some weight. You can see we got some weights up here because we're going to be making some more power. There's talks about putting this thing on a bigger tire as well. And this thing might want to do a wheelie to the moon. So yeah, yeah, if we got traction. Now we're going to be back to fighting weight up front. So we got to make sure we have provisions for it. Yeah, we're just thinking of everything we can. And the MR2 is now officially not like it wasn't already, but it's going full blown race car. We don't have this stuff yet, but I'll go ahead and say that we are putting the car in a 16 volt system as well. We're ditching the alternator, no more belt, no more alternator itself, no more bracket. So we're cutting weight out there and we're just going to have a 16 volt battery that will go right here in the front and we will have to charge the car in between each pass and yeah. we're going full-blown race car with this girl if the boosted boys didn't have enough problems yeah we figured putting a 16 the last volt, ones help. that need to rely on a battery are yeah. us but we will no longer have the alternator on this thing but it's going to save a ton of weight and everything will be happier on a 16 volt system the reason People run a 16 volt system is so that the injectors have more power the ignition system has more power and everything is just happier especially when you're trying to make these extreme power levels so yeah that's that we got like two weeks to go yay let's get this party started big mr2 update for you guys but we're trying to freaking make world cup guys we're gonna make it happen we just need our freaking motor and then we're set we need six more of us to, yeah uh, knock this out and then we'd be really i need sick. like three more wyatts and we'd be good yep <laughs> We'll get it done though, man. I have faith. As long as nothing sneaks up out of nowhere. <laughs> and something probably will. Probably will. So in preparation to get the MR2 ready for World Cup, we are finally upgrading the brakes on this thing. For those of you that don't know, the MR2 has been on the factory brakes this entire time. We've gone a 7.5 at 192 mile an hour on freaking these things. These old rusty girls right here. So we are finally upgrading the brakes. It has been needed to be done for a very long time now and we are getting it done and if you look right here, we got ourselves a full drag spec brake kit for the MR2 here. This is a kit put together by Toyonda 
and it's pretty straightforward a lot of willwood hardware right here and what makes these special are these little adapter brackets right here so these bolt to where the factory calipers used to bolt and you can see that's the same bolt pattern right there and then it just adapts to the willwood single piston caliper like so and we actually already put this one together right here on the mr2 we also added some extended arp studs as well because we have been needing to get some of those and this guy is all put together he's got to run the brake lines to that got a really nice wheel bearing on that front one there but we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of it on there it should be pretty straightforward and if you guys look right here we got ourselves a little scale and this right here is the front rotor and caliper and we are looking at 20 and a half pounds compared to the willwood setup with the rotor and caliper oh, we can't forget our brake pads get those guys in there a little over nine and a half so over 10 pounds of savings there and then the rears weigh eight and a half and then the rear factory rotor and crusty freaking caliper weigh 18 on the dot so was that another 10 pounds there yep. close to it so we'll save close to 40 pounds overall off the weight of the mr2 it's gonna be a lot safer for us to slow this thing down because we do plan on going faster. The build block's going in the car. It's about time we have done something about the brakes. So we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of these on. Brakes will be good to go on this thing. And uh, yeah, hopefully they can slow us down. It may be 200 miles an hour. We'll see what happens. Check it out guys. We got the brakes on the MR2 ready to go. We just gotta get everything bled. But you guys can see how these mount from the back. Very straightforward. It just goes to the factory spindle mounts there where the old caliper was and then it adapts to the willwood caliper got the rotor on there got our centering ring right there we just have a couple lug nuts to hold everything together we got both the fronts and both of the rears done so check that out it's been so long that we've been needing to do this but it's finally done that is one of the last major upgrades we have been needing to do to the mr2 is get the brakes done and those are on there just about ready to go but as you guys saw we have so much to get done on this thing and it's going to be a very busy next couple weeks for us so we're gonna try to do you guys proud get this thing ready to go for world cup one of the biggest races in the country which i am going to be very excited just to be a part of so hopefully we can actually get there and be competitive and the mr2 will make us proud but i gotta get this video wrapped up guys between fl2k and uh planning for the mr2 i just had to kind of get everything caught up into this video so starting from now on and moving forward into the next couple weeks, we'll be focused on the MR2 here, getting it ready for World Cup. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have no idea what this thing's gonna do out there. Like I said, we might freaking see 200 miles an hour if all goes well. Billet block, we're, we're pulling out all the stops. Bigger turbo, we are sending it out there and I'm excited for it, boys. So I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was just a big old MR2 update and we'll see you guys in the next one.